Okay, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our webinar on minimizing design of experiment DOE for process optimization using data mining approach. Uh, these are the program lineup for today. But before we start, uh, before we start, let's look at a short introduction video by our knowledge transfer office. Yep. Akitio, please. In today's rapidly changing manufacturing environment, companies and engineering professionals have to keep themselves abreast of the latest advancements in technology to maintain their competitiveness and professional competency in the shortest time possible. In such a dynamic environment, the need for real-time and forward-thinking training is crucial. To address these immediate needs, the A-Star Singapore Institute of Manufacturing Technology, or SimTech, and SkillsFuture Singapore have come together to provide relevant technology-based training for the manufacturing industry. Singapore Institute of Manufacturing Technology, or SimTech, is a public research institute under the Agency for Science, Technology and Research, or A-Star. SimTech's mission is to develop high-value manufacturing technologies and human capital to enhance the competitiveness of Singapore industry. Through strategic collaboration with industry partners and R&D efforts over the years, SimTech has generated in-depth knowledge and capabilities through over 300 industry projects annually. This know-how and experience allow our researchers to transfer and upgrade workforce skills aimed at productivity improvement and business transformation. In partnership with the Skills Future Singapore, SimTech has been upskilling and reskilling the industry since 2008 through a wide range of industrial training programs under the Skills Framework using an innovative learn, practice and implement training model. Through more than 10 years of growth, we now train more than 1,000 professionals annually. This program helped the industry to be future-ready in today's technology workforce where digital transformation has accelerated and the key to adopting new technologies is through workforce reskilling and upskilling. Other than delivering timely case study-based curriculum, the Knowledge Transfer Office also provides hands-on practical training combined with industry best practices. Participants also have access to SimTech's state-of-the-art labs to learn about the latest technological advancement to equip themselves with new skills. For example, WSQ Operation Management Innovation Program, or OMNI, which helps companies align process to company strategies and helps many companies to make significant improvement in operational productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness. The team has further developed the Digital Transformation and Innovation, or DTI, program to train and guide key personnel of organizations to be digital transformers in leveraging digital technologies to accelerate business model changes and achieve meaningful digital transformation. Using the DTI methodology, participants will learn to analyze and redesign your strategies, business model, value streams, and system architecture to ensure greater alignment, unlock new business growth, and achieve sustainable competitive advantage. As companies continue to benefit from SimTech's unique courses and manufacturing expertise, the Knowledge Transfer Office at SimTech is fast becoming recognized as Singapore's one-stop destination for manufacturing skills competency training by offering a wide range of courses and modules. The Knowledge Transfer Office helps industry in continuous education of their manufacturing professionals, managers, engineers, and technicians in the manufacturing sector. By collaborating with SSG, the Knowledge Transfer Office of SimTech offers a number of SSG-certified WSQ courses, each designed to cater to the respective local industry sector. SkillsFuture Singapore is happy to partner SimTech for the last 13 years to provide industry-relevant training programs for the manufacturing sector. Through their learn, 
practice, implement methodology, syntax training programs incorporate skills training, mentorship, and project implementation. These three elements, coupled with syntax model factory and innovation factory, come together in a synergistic way to benefit many SMEs across different industries. I'm heartened to know that Simtech is working closely with our institutes of higher learning to enable expertise transfer and to share best practices, even beyond the manufacturing sector. I look forward to our continued partnership with Simtech to drive skills development in advanced manufacturing and to support industry transformation in Singapore. Thank you, colleague from the Knowledge Transfer Office. So these are the program for today. Firstly, we will start off with our welcome introduction by our MPTC and SimTech by Mr. Wami Mao, our Deputy, Deputy Director from MPTC SimTech, and followed by Minimizing Design Experiment DOE for Process Optimization Using Data Mining Approach Case Study Sharing by Dr. Li Xiang, our Senior Scientist from SimTech. And last but not least by uh, Syntax Data Mining, uh, cost structure and finding sharing by myself. And we will actually end the program with a QA and a session. So first up, uh, let's welcome Mr. Wang Mimao. Mimao, please. Okay, let me share my screen. Good morning, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Mima. Okay, let me do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Ming Mao. I'm the Deputy Director of MPTC. So I'll give you a brief overview of SimTech for those who are unfamiliar with SimTech. So we are a research institute under ASTAR. Our focus is manufacturing technology. So we have two roles. One role is to develop high value manufacturing technologies. And the other role is to train human capital. So our aim is to help Singapore-based manufacturing companies improve their competitiveness. So Simtech is about 450 strong full-time staff. And uh, this is our organization. So if you look at the research divisions, these are our workhorses. So they are the the researchers and engineers, the scientists and engineers working in different areas. So we focus on four areas. One is called manufacturing processes. So it's basically the process of making things. How do you join things? How do you machine thing? How do you form thing? Whether it's 3D printing, casting or, or bending, and then polymer processing and surface technology, which is the coating part. So if you have issue making things, the manufacturing process division will help you on that. The other division is the automation. So mechatronics will cover robotics, fine precision motion control and so on. And then the precision measurement will be doing things from uh, uh, measuring anything down to nano scale. One of our key strengths is using uh, video analytics, uh, video machine vision inspection to, to help you do very complicated inspection online such as some project we have done is contact lens inspection and uh, stem shells inspection and so on. The, the next division we call manufacturing system is more on the software side and more of the digitalization come. So what we do is we cover the whole bandwidth from shop floor enterprise to the supply chain. So we have manufacturing control tower which focus on the I4.0 and then execution and control focusing more on a short floor, the scheduling, the predictive maintain, maintenance, the data analytics, and so on. And planning and operation doing to scheduling, supply chain optimization, forecasting, inventory optimization. Uh, the last but not least division is called sustainability and emerging. So sustainability include the, uh, the, and the life cycle engineering is the new kit on the block. So it is uh, focusing a lot on the green stuff that we are looking into vertical farming, looking into how to make Singapore more sustainable, carbon footprint, energy, water, and so on. 
Their printed intelligent device and smart fluidics are our internal bets for the future. Printed intelligent devices do row-to-row -row printing, such thing as a printed lighting on a film where you can wrap around the bus without the light box, or you can print sensors that we embed into wearables such as a heating measure, your heartbeat and so on. And microfluidics are disposable plastic devices with micro channels that we can use for blood or water testing. And we are working very closely with our biomedical counterparts to develop prototypes and so on. So to face the industry, we have four innovation centers. So the innovation center is like supermarkets to the industry. If you're interested in manufacturing productivity, then you come to MPTC where I'm based. If you're interested in the manufacturing processes, then you go to the PE Center of uh, uh, Innovation. And then the SEAC is taking care of the sustainability and uh, emerging applications. Uh, the new kit on the block is Innovation Factory. So we are going to help local companies idealize and productize and come out new services because traditionally Singapore-based companies are very good in manufacturing providing manufacturing services. But in order to move out of the value chain, we need to come out our own products and services. Okay, the, the rest is quite standard. We have research liaison office, industrial liaison office, knowledge transfer office for, for more of the uh, uh, PMAX training. So we are one of the certified education center working with uh, Skill Future, providing a lot of training. So we have around more than a thousand trainees every year graduating from our program. Okay, so this is our typical sector, but uh, it's not limited to this. Uh. So based on the new RIE 2025, we will shift accordingly, okay? Okay, so next thing is MPTC. We, we launched it in 2011, originally look, looking into productivity and innovation, but in the recent years, we are moving into digital transformation. So to help digital transformation, we have set up a model factory at Syntec where we demonstrate a final assembly product, but more to showcase about 15 to 20 digitalization solutions that industry participants can come and see and then they can see maybe because seeing is believing. A lot of them, they say, you, you are, if you just do paper talk, people don't understand. So coming to this model factory, you'll get a few uh, how it is being implemented. So we welcome local industry participants to contact us to arrange visit to this. Uh, due to the COVID phase two now, we are restricting to five visitors at the moment. Uh. Hopefully this can be lifted and then we can go back to the bigger size. Okay, so in the model factory, what we are doing is we are trying to do a phys cyber fiscal system and these are some of the solutions, machine monitoring, condition monitoring, predictive maintenance, scheduling, in-situ quality and so on and so forth, okay? So last but not least, uh, this is what we want to say is, uh, these are the digital manufacturing capabilities, primarily from the manufacturing system division. So these are the areas that we can do, digitalization, supply chain, enterprise, and shop floor. So we have worked with local SME, MNCs, LLEs in various areas. And today's uh, data mining for DOE optimization is under the predictive quality part. Okay, we have helped quite a number of companies and would like to engage you in, uh, in this uh, uh, learn practice implement uh, training. Uh, I pass this back to Dr. Lee Siang. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wami Mao. So now I would like to invite Dr. Lee Xiang to share our minimizing design experiment for process optimization using data mining approach. Dr. Lee, please. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Li Xiang, a senior scientist. Today, I'm happy to share with you how to use data mining approach to solve your process issues, how to minimize this uh, de design of experiments for process optimization. 
So as you know, this uh, industry 4.0 is a very hot topic now. It's a for next generation manufacturing. What mean the industry 4.0? It uh, should be in your shop flow, all the machine need to connect each other, that machine connect to machine, machine connect to people, even connect to your material. So all the information should be visible. So for the, in the future, your shop flow, all the shop flow need to link, not only machine to machine, but also link to your enterprise and the supply chain. So because you have a, this uh, functionality, so you have uh, made your shop flow more flexible, data driven, and the big data analysis makes your shop flow is uh, more responsible and uh, intelligent. So industry 4.0 is uh, make your company more competitive and uh, sustainable. So what is a smart manufacturer? What is a smart factory? Uh, as I said, how they should be linked shelf flow to the enterprise to supply chain. So we say in the future, we should be very free shelf flow, predictive enterprise, timely supply chain and the logistics and the eco efficient resource management. So we look at the manufacturing, we can say it's a data rich, uh, why we say this way? Because in your shelf flow, you have a many, many machine, right? So in the very, very low level, you have a many hardware, hard devices, include the sensor, actor, and so on. So at this uh, little bit uh, higher level, you have a PLC, you have a distributed control system, you have a human machine interface, you have the advanced process control system. So more higher level, you have a shelf flow control system, you have a manufacturing execution system, you have an enterprise access management. More enterprise level, you have a ERP system, you have a production life cycle management system, you have a supply chain management, you have a, a customer relationship management. So you can see from a lower to higher level, manufacturing have a, everywhere have a data, data, data. But what is the issue? Some company told me, we are data rich. Uh, we can collect the data every day, every month, every year. But we found that we collect, collect, collect by end. How to use this data can help me, can help me to make a benefit. So that's why we introduce this uh, data mining approach. What is a uh, data mining? Actually, it is a check the useful information and the knowledge from a huge number of data. Uh, some people also talk about big data analytics. So in SimTech, we have a team is uh, working for the data driven methodology. We also develop the system and the software to solve industry problem. So we have developed so-called intelligent credit engine, IPE. This one involves the data mining, machine learning, and the artificial intelligence, the methodology or random. Our purpose want to configure all these method for industry problem. Uh, for example, how to monitor my equipment performance, process condition monitoring, how to detect anomaly, how to predict my quality, how to do the root cause analysis and the process optimization. Here, here is a show you this uh, uh, platform, this uh, architecture. So this uh, three layer architecture, you can see the first layer, we call this a uh, data analysis pool. You know, every year, SimTech, we are working with a local university, NTU, NUS. We have a, every year develop new methodology or random. Everything is a developed, we put it's a data analysis pool. Uh, so after that, SimTech have developed this a middle layer called IPE. 
So this layer is uh, mapping the algorithm with the industry problem. Uh, we are more focused on the shelf flow. Shelf flow, how to help you for equipment health monitoring, how to help you to do the quality prediction, how to help you to do the process optimization. So this uh, insight have a different module, play the different role. For example, how to process data, how to clustering the data with uh, similarity, how to select the feature, how to predict, uh, predict the model to help you to predict your quality, predict your equipment failure, how to supervise your process to do the optimization. We also develop this uh, data mining software uh, with a very basic function for online trending monitoring, but we have a special function for key parameter identification, how to detect the uh, anomaly in the early stage, uh, how to predict your quality, how to do the classification and the process optimization. Now, I would like to use some case, uh, use case to explain how we use uh, data mining and the machine, machine learning help the local industry. The first use case is uh, correlation analysis and the predictive modeling for process optimization in wear bonding process. This, this case for semiconductor. What is a problem uh, for the facing by the company? So in semicolon uh, wear bonding process, this uh, tail lens and the free elbow, FAB, is uh, impossible to measure online. So that's why is, uh, they want to detect the failure about the tail lens and the FAB is uh, very difficult. Uh, so they want to, based on the some Non process parameter, how to predict unknown variable. This is very difficult. So, most time the process engineer, when they have a get a quality issue, for example, this week my reject is an increase, increase, increase. So, I need to do the DOE design to find out what is the root cause, cause this quality issue. So, I need a design this experiment with a different way to find out the first, uh, identify the major factor. Second, I need to see which factor I need to fine tune, tune how much. So the traditional way, they have identified the major factor by their domain knowledge. Then after that, based on, for example, I have a consider three parameters, the major factor affect uh, my failure for pay lens. Then after that, I need to design my, my DOE. Uh, six, uh, three parameters, I fix a two and change one by several steps. Then I go to many DOE experiments. After that, if uh, no good, I need to re back to design again, right? So this one is a traditional way, but it's a very time consuming and high cost. This project, this want to use the data mining, uh, use a smart way, how to improve the first one, identify the key parameters. Uh, what is a key parameters? This uh, influence, this uh, tail lines and the FAB failure. The second one, I want to develop the auto way uh, to estimate this uh, tail lines and the FAB failure. Then next one, I want to design the smart way for my DOE simulation. I don't want to buy manual, uh, one by one do a lot of experiment. So the benefit to the company is a uh, reduce this uh, failure, uh, false alarm due to this uh, failure, improve the yield by my prediction and uh, reduce the cost for my DOE experiment. So we start this uh, project by several steps. Uh, this uh, step is a data mining step. First step is uh, to do the data collection and the data pre-processing. In our many projects, 
this uh, step is uh, time consuming because we want to collect uh, correct data. Uh, is a uh, data quality is very important. We want to collect uh, correct data and uh, remove all the noise. Uh, we don't want to have a noise because build my model. If you have noise, not accurate. So we based on this one, we need to clean up by using some laser. Then next one, you can see at the beginning, collect data is very messy, right? So we need to clean up this data, then say what is the wrong data, what is the missing data, what is the noise in my data table. Then finally, we need to convert all the data from a different data source in my project. Is a process engineer have to identify why is a, uh, identify for my model what is the input variable, what is the output variable. After that, you need to identify your data source, put all the data into the standard data format as this way. Finally, you can see here is a process product, production information. Then the middle side is uh, my model input parameters. Uh, so this uh, parameter can be defined by local engineer. Then my output is uh, my target. Uh, for, for example, what is a uh, measurement is uh, can be defined for the quality, pass and the fail, okay? So second step, when you prepare your data clean up. The second step, you need to do the data mining, machine learning. You need to configure what the method can be applied for my data, right? So because in my data analysis pool is many algorithm, which one is suitable for you? You need to buy second step, uh, choose the functions of data mining choose the uh, mean mine um, uh, data mining algorithm and the uh, search the pattern can be described by the algorithm. The, the step is uh, first one, they need to identify the major factor. For this case, uh, they have uh, given me the total is uh, nine parameters. Uh, this case is a uh, nine parameters. For other project, some company gave me 500, uh, more than 500. So among these uh, parameters, I want to use the auto way to identify which one is a major factor. I want to get the top five. Uh, so this uh, measure is a correlation analysis linear measure. It can be automatically ranking out among these uh, nine, which one is a ranking first. Ranking first means they have a high correlation with the uh, output. So from this uh, table, you can see the X7 uh, is a ranking first, but the even ranking first, their correlation coefficient value is only 25%, it's uh, quite low. That means this uh, input and output don't have a linear correlation. Then after that, we use a nonlinear correlation approach. Uh, this, uh, Correlation-based filtering is a nonlinear algorithm. So from this algorithm, they have identified uh, the, for the Y1 is a six, for the Y2 is a four major factor. After they identify this major factor, this nonlinear, we still need to use a model to evaluate is correct or not. After that, we use a different the modeling method maybe regression is a statistics and the, uh, AI method like a back propagation neural network, like a support vector machine. For this case, the base model, they have a defined is a fuzzy neural network. Uh, so among these uh, nine, they have a finally defined three major factor, uh, five these uh, defects. Uh, after that, they use this uh, historical data to build the model. After build this model, the next one, the step is uh, we need to convert this uh, machine learning result to the, our knowledge. We need to add uh, my measurement can see through this uh, predict model, what the benefit we can use. Uh, 
So the final purpose is uh, use this uh, predictive model. I say the best model is a fuzzy neural network. We use this uh, fuzzy neural network to do the smart DOE design. Uh, what do I mean the smart DOE design? Here you can see we use a what if analysis function to set up your DOE input at the beginning. Uh, you say traditional way we have a use, for example, three parameters. I fit the two, change one. I say each one is a 10 step. Then one by one, I go through the DOE experiment. Go through, result is good, I stop. If not good, I try another point, right? So for this uh, smart DOE, we don't do this way. We do the way is uh, we just uh, select these uh, three parameters. Uh, then this uh, system automatically show you the these are uh, three parameter. What is a uh, minimum? What is a uh, maximum? Based on this, uh, each variable minimum and maximum, my based on my domain knowledge, uh, process engineer, your set is an uh, interval. Uh, this one is uh, every 10K is a uh, one step. Uh, so this one from 92 is go to 102 until 307. This one is the uh, same. This uh, from uh, 28.84, each interval is 0 0.01, okay? So after that, I set, each variable interval based on your domain knowledge, I can generate all this uh, DOE input value. Uh, this uh, input value is automatically setting. So total we can see because this uh, DOE scenario, DOE case is uh, this, uh, the first variable, how many case, second, how many step, time together. Uh, for example, this uh, 10 times 10 times 10. So there will be thousand uh, case. For this case, uh, based on this setup, they have uh, generated one fifteen uh, k about fifteen k if condition. Uh, this uh, case generate. Then after that, we use this uh, input bring to my fuzzy neural network. Okay, use my fuzzy neural network. You put input. I predict this output, uh, then I predict this output. The so all the 15K output predict. After that, I set a target. Uh, I set target for my this uh, quality, what is uh, my threshold target? Uh, they have uh, upper, lower limit, you have a uh, quality target. Then use this target, I can compile with uh, my prediction result. Then I use the difference between my target and then my predict value, I can see which one is give me the very close value. Huh? So we ranking out, you can see this table, we can see top five, huh? among the 15K, uh, top five is uh, like uh, this value. So look at this uh, value, uh, my target is a uh, thousand, for example, my prediction is uh, 1016 is uh, most close to this one. So the parameter setting, at the beginning I have a three, right? But the company process engineer say, one of this, even the major factor, I cannot control. This is not controllable because the value may be just a, a false, a false value I cannot control. Only P3 and the P5 here. Uh, show here is a process parameter I can control. So how to set up uh, so we can follow the system. The optimal setup should be amount here, uh, amount here. So based on your domain knowledge, you still need to adjust uh, because this one is uh, purely from your historical data. Then you based on your knowledge, still need to adjust uh, which one the, I need a, uh, use uh, average, or I need to uh, use uh, just uh, some value is uh, reasonable, then you go to the real DOE experiment, okay? So in this way, they can identify what is the benefit by using smart uh, DOE. Uh, so this one, they have uh, 
compare before and after. Uh, before they do the traditional DOE design, they need a two engineer for two months by try and error. Uh, the cost label is uh, for one month. After that, use a data mining based DOE design. So they only use a one engineer and the one month. Uh, so the manpower has 75% reduced. But you also look at the, they also reduce the real DOE experiment. So because reduce this uh, DOE experiment, I save the material, I save the manpower, I save the machine use time. So you can see here material cost have uh, saved the uh, 50%. Machine time have also reduced 50%. This one is a benefit. This one is a benefit because use this smart DOE design by using data mining machine learning by predictive model, you can reduce time also more accurate, more accurate because they have choose all the case have covered. For the traditional one, you cannot cover so many case. Okay, this one is a very use case. Uh, I also want to share with you not only DOE design, but the data mining machine learning also can help for root cause analysis. This case is a process root cause analysis for yield improvement in manufacturing process. Uh, the problem statement we said uh, in this uh, shop floor, they have uh, more than 300 machines. Uh, for the product, it go to the different uh, process. Uh, they have uh, more than 20 process. So the product will go to this uh, own routing. But uh, sometimes they have uh, found out this uh, few weeks, they always reject, reject, reject. Then the management will ask the uh, process engineer, can you tell me which process which machine cause this uh, problem? Uh, so they want to find out reason. That's why we start this uh, project. The purpose, the first one is uh, discover the root cause. Uh, this one, the for the trouble shooting for this uh, machine unit and the parameter that the cause a uh, low yield. Uh, the second one is a uh, reduce process and the quality analysis time to improve productivity. So this one is uh, the procedure is the same as uh, the first one. I don't want to one by one go. Huh? So all the projects go to standard way. Uh, first one, collect data. Second one, data pre-processing. Third one, do the major factor identification. Fourth one is uh, build up predictive model. Now this uh, project have uh, built up the predictive model, they also highlight also fuzzy neural network is the best model for their process, this OLA process. So they have uh, gave the total process parameter is a 500 uh, process parameter. Finally, similar, they have identified, auto identified three uh, parameters. This one, sometimes we cannot say 100% auto, but also need to combine with a process domain, uh, process engineer domain knowledge. After that, if we confirm this uh, three parameter, we build model with your defects, with your quality measurement. So the, they have uh, used this uh, data mining approach, solve their problem for a real outlier identification and uh, how to uh, manage their array sheet uh, problem. So uh, they have a before after comparison. The benefit is uh, they have a reduced uh, root cause analysis time by 80%. Uh, so from uh, before need uh, 10 days, now it's only two days. So for their DOE uh, design is uh, similar. Uh, they have a uh, safe uh, manpower, they have a uh, safe the material, they have a uh, safe their machine time. Uh, so this uh, total have uh, reduced uh, 50% for this uh, project. Another use case is uh, how to use uh, my predict model to do the auto uh, recipe tuning. This one is a wafer fat uh, diffusion process case. 
the problem is uh, in this uh, process is a nitride process. Then they have uh, set up the parameter in traditional way. Uh, process engineer set up the parameter, go through four or five hours. Then this uh, wafer come out with uh, this uh, chamber, right? This uh, chamber is a uh, five layer. Then each layer have a uh, twenty five wafer. So after this uh, wafer come out, then they go to the inspection. Uh, this uh, inspection, traditional way, the process engineer need uh, based on this uh, measurement, the uh, quality wafer signal to see this is out of control or inside. If uh, inside, they say no need to do anything. If uh, out of, uh, is uh, out of two sigma, the process engineer need to uh, manually fine tune uh, how to tune my next batch, how to tune my process parameters, uh, include the uh, Depot time include the temperature. So this uh, manually tuning. So every time when they do the calculation, all the uh, production need to stop uh, waiting their result come out. So this uh, company say, uh, can you help us to systematic way to fine tune my uh, tuning my parameters? Because sometimes is a uh, some people have a knowledge, then they can do very well. Some people is very new, uh, is uh, may not accurate to tune. Then another way is uh, they want to uh, they want to uh, avoid any human error happen. So we have developed this uh, small system. Then based on this uh, similar as uh, this uh, process, based on the output measurement, our system can be automatically tell controller what a parameter to tune, tune how much. So we based on this uh, vision one sigma, you don't need to do anything else. Vision two sigma, you need to follow system recommendation. Vision three sigma, your process engineer need to come. Uh, then you make a decision with the system to tell how much to tune. Uh, so for our system is uh, based on the machine learning, we have a self-learning capability. We have learned the, all the recipe with a group, a cluster with a group. Same group recipe can tune together. Uh, we can use here the model. So we have a uh, before after comparison. We have found that by manual tuning and the supervised control tuning, we can reduce and we can increase the CPK 20 to 30 percent for this uh, pilot project. Then they also 80% uh, is can be controlled toward to the one sigma. Uh, this uh, most uh, case is uh, missing the one sigma. So they also compare the for the this uh, pilot phase. Uh, they have identified quality is a 20 30 percent CPK increase. Then this uh, machine availability increase uh, five to ten percent because they don't need the uh, uh, process engineer calculation and the waiting. So they said also reduce the manpower six to seven percent for the manual tuning a human being to take care of all the machine. We don't say we want to use an intelligent measure to, to fire the engineer, but we say process engineer in semiconductor is extremely busy. Last time they say is a one engineer take care of 27 machine. So very, very busy to call here, call there. So if we use a system, it's uh, only the system call you, you come in. If uh, not call you, you can do other things. So this uh, make process engineer more efficient uh, job. The another is a uh, measurement concern is a uh, human error. Uh, with this uh, system, we can reduce this uh, human error. Uh, so for 80%. Uh, have another case is also uh, semiconductor, but this one is uh, in situ, Scrap uh, in situ uh, scrap estimation by stream process parameter in molding process. So their problem is to say the lack of uh, any knowledge, uh, understanding the correlation between their molding process parameter and the, their product uh, scrap. So they want to identify among my pressure, my position, my relocation temperature, major factor is a make this a scrap happen. So they also need a data minimizer for the root cause. Then we can automatically to predict a scrap, then reduce this uh, uh, 
human being, manual inspection. So project objective is a study and explore the correlation between select uh, process parameters and the uh, scrap and also predict the uh, scrap uh, based on process parameters. They have uh, given us uh, 220, uh, uh, two, 2,260 lot is a good one. 53 is a scrap data. So this uh, historical data, use this uh, data for training, uh, for my machine learning training, data mining training. They also use a uh, blank testing. They use, also use another data set. They didn't tell us which one is a uh, scrap. Then through our machine learning model, to tell them which one is uh, scrapped, then they evaluate our prediction accuracy. So we have uh, helped to develop this uh, so-called Simon supervised uh, learning method uh, based on they get the uh, label the historical data, uh, then we do the training. After that, we based on this uh, training curve, we can detect this uh, the algorithm can detect an uh, anomaly pattern through this uh, stream uh, curing, uh, this uh, curing plot uh, time series data. They have uh, given us a uh, 204K plot, uh, this uh, curing plot time series data. So after that, uh, during this project, they have identified before, after what is a benefit. So they say, the physical product the quality inspection by operation before is 100%. That means the, they need to use uh, manpower operators stand there to do the inspection, 100% uh, inspection. If uh, by using this uh, predict model, they could be uh, reduce, uh, reduce this uh, 60, 70%. Uh, for example, if uh, my model is uh, say, is a uh, die pass, this one is, uh, pass product, then you don't need to use a human being to inspect them again. So only our system suspect this uh, not good one or a marginal one, then you use uh, manpower to double check again. So this one is uh, only 30, 40% effort. Then another one is uh, they have a uh, uh, default, they need to use uh, one hour to find out what is a root cause. Now it's a uh, 50 minute can be identified the root cause. This are saving 70% for the manpower. So another case is a correlation analysis for optimize the Meditech manufacturing. Their problem is also DOE. This is a DOE design. They said before it's difficult to determine the new site of parameter data for their ceiling process. So they want to the project objective is applying data mining to do the smart DOE. They want to compare with uh, traditional DOE. What is a good one help them? So this uh, procedure is uh, similar as uh, before. Uh, after they use uh, predictive model to do the DOE design, they have uh, find out for their manpower, similar, reduce uh, 50, material cost uh, 50%, then uh, overall is uh, uh, 50%. Uh, so they also link this with their uh, dollar, uh, how many dollar can be saving. The final case, uh, this uh, another case, the final case I want to talk about anomaly pattern discovery by classification. So this one is also semiconductor testing process. So for this uh, tester, we have uh, uh, inspection every day, then for the pass, failure and the marginal. So the challenge is said they want to have a zero defect to customer. Uh, they don't want to have any failure path to the customer. So they want to detect rate 100%. But uh, they, they found that if uh, they want to detect uh, this uh, failure one, this, this uh, failure one is good one ship out, then they have a problem, uh, customer will be feedback. Then if uh, they put the uh, narrow down uh, this uh, threshold, uh, little by the later, then they also found some good one, come the bad one, throw away, right? This is uh, called the false reject. 
So the challenge is how to I can detect the full failure path. I can detect. Then I also minimize my uh, false reject rate. So we have uh, the project uh, objective is to uh, deliver zero defect product to customer, but also get the as lower as possible for regenerate. They have uh, give the, some historical data to us inside is a uh, 30K, uh, is a uh, 13K data with uh, 170 testing parameters. So inside only have a uh, 27 marginal, 29 bad one we don't interesting, we take away. The difficult things, we need to detect this marginal. Uh, don't give this marginal to the customer. We have uh, do our experiments to more close to the real. We put the 9999 good one, only put the one marginal inside. We have repeat this uh, data sample for 865 repeat experiments. So after that, we have de developed this uh, data clustering method to automatically detect what is a marginal, what is a good. After that, uh, our algorithm have uh, uh, show that uh, based on this uh, blood testing, that means they give us the data with the marginal they didn't tell us. Then through our algorithm, we can 100% detect, also reduce the uh, 0.2 uh, false reject rate. Okay, by end, I still need to say how to convert your data mining algorithm into the meaningful, uh, to the measurement is a uh, useful information. So we have uh, developed this uh, so-called uh, dashboard to their manager, to their supervisor, to uh, engineer, to operator. So the major contribution for this uh, project, we can and they find the marginal threshold. Uh, this one cannot give in by customer. Uh, nobody gave this uh, learn from data. Then based on this uh, threshold, the operator can see which one is all. Uh, then they can pick up and uh, they can select. So this one is a major contribution by data mining and the machine learning. Okay, so uh, I have a many case. Uh, some case is a real uh, implement in the production line. Some case is uh, through the training. Uh, we have a data mining training program. So this uh, program is uh, very special. We just use uh, one third for teach uh, theoretical things. Uh, so total is uh, 17 session, only four session is a uh, teach class uh, lecture. Other session is uh, more than, uh, is a uh, 10 session is uh, for the on-site project. That means the, the people join this uh, program, you can, uh, based on the group, you can use your company own data uh, to do the data mining to analyze their data can be uh, meet your target or not, like a feasibility study. But the main purpose is uh, training you how to uh, understand this uh, data mining approach how to use a data mining method solve your own problem. Uh, this is a major purpose. Then I think uh, Haidin will spend the time to give your details uh, about what is uh, this uh, program. That's all for my presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee. So if you have any questions, please do write down in the Q&A. So we will answer them shortly. Right, so uh, like what Dr. Lee has mentioned, so I will be sharing a little bit on uh, the detail of our course and also the respective fundings involved. Right. Okay, so as what Dr. Lee had mentioned earlier also, so our data mining technique is to extract useful information from data. So this course is focused on building up participants' data analytics skills to solve real company issues. So throughout the past batch of trainings, we've already seen successful applications in auto detection, root cause discovery, correlation analysis and prediction, smart DOE for process optimization, and many others. So Dr. Lee has just now also shared some successful case studies we generated from the projects and the courses involved, right? So the course features include the sharing of up-to-date data mining techniques, 
unique trained mentor approach with hands-on sessions comp uh, and complementary usage of data mining software developed by Synthet team. So during the course itself, you do not have to worry about anything. So we will just come with a learning mind. So open-mindedness uh, is actually very important for us. So we will be sharing you about uh, sharing you some knowledge about data mining. We will be guiding you through the hands-on, and eventually we will guide you through the projects, right? So upon completion of this course, you will be also awarded the statement of attainment from the WSQ course. So this course follows Syntax unique learn, practice, and implement model, where we actually start off with the interactive lecture, hands-on on tra hands trainings and case studies sharing, and followed by participant, uh, participants to practice through on-site projects with companies' own data under the support of our dedicated mentors, and eventually implementations of what we learned in the course to uh, verified and uh, see the productivity adaptation, right? So there are four sessions of classroom uh, sessions to help build up the fundamental knowledge on data mining concepts regarding the data clustering, correlation analysis, regression modeling, artificial intelligence. So followed by the 10 sessions, we will actually be doing the projects. Yep. So our mentors will be guiding you through solving the real problems using the data mining technology itself. So altogether, we'll be looking into 14 sessions for the full course, right? So there are two variations of our course to cater to the various needs of our learners and participants. So there's a full, full course of 14 sessions, which includes lecture, hands-on, and on-site projects. And there are also another variation, it's called Data Mining Light. So this session will only contain the lecture and hands-on sessions. So you can sign up for whichever suits your needs. So due to the current COVID situation, we are actually going fully online for these two courses. Of course, based on your requirement for the full course itself, if they are concerned for confidentiality of data used, we will also be uh, making arrangements for on-sites. Yeah. But the default mode will be online, right? So in uh, for international participants are also welcome to join, but may not be uh, subjected to any of the subsidies as mentioned here. So for the local participants, we actually have a lot of funding schemes supported by government, right? So we have, uh, we are, depending on your age, depending on your status, depending on which company you come from, there are various uh, funding schemes available, right? So we have a team of dedicated mentors supporting this training, headed by our senior scientist, Dr. Li Xiang. And these are the detail of contents to be covered during the course. So you can see that the first, first four sessions will be mainly on sharing of technologies and also some hands-ons to make sure we understand each of the uh, knowledge points being taught, right? So followed by the project sessions. And finally, we will also have a final presentation and we'll actually be giving a recommendation and preparation for next phase implementation. So this will be the content for the data mining light, which contains, consists of four sessions of lectures and hands-on. Okay. Also, I want to add on uh, this uh, training program, they have uh, two kinds of uh, model. One is uh, called the uh, cooperation class. Then this means that uh, we organize this uh, programming with a single company. But uh, one company will provide uh, more than 10 engineers joined together. So we can have a pro project within the program based on your problem statement. Maybe some engineer from a QA department, some engineer from a different process, then they have uh, built up this uh, so-called uh, project group. Uh, based on this uh, small group, you do the data mining project. Another mode, mode, mode is a uh, public class. Some companies say, I, uh, I want to also learn this uh, methodology, but uh, I don't have uh, enough uh, uh, the, the training join together for 10 people. So you can individual uh, staff, you can join this uh, public class. This uh, public class is a uh, multiple company together. 
then uh, some company have their own data. Some company uh, people come in don't have a data. If uh, you don't have data, Simtech will provide the data to you. Uh, they also provide all the laptop, all the software to everybody. Okay, so this uh, public class, uh, the next batch is uh, 21st of June. Uh, so if uh, you're interested, you can go to KTO website to do the registration. Okay, hey, thank you, Dr. Lee. So um, I will now invite our, our KTO uh, colleague to actually start a poll, right? So Peter, please. And also meanwhile, if you have any questions regarding the content shared by Dr. Lee and also uh, probably regarding our course, feel free to uh, write it in our, our chat. We will answer them. We can answer any questions. Uh, for if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. We can answer. And then meanwhile, our, my, our colleague from KTO, our Peter, has also sent out the uh, respective links for you to actually look at in more detail. Pre, uh, please feel free to check them out. Right. So if any questions, yeah, or you can also log on to our um, website or contact us for more information. Okay, so I'm seeing one question in the in the uh, chat. So um, I think it's regarding the project. How to assess if company meets data quality requirement? The risk is sign up for project and data is not good enough. This is by Mr. Mr. Kim. Yeah. Dr. Lee, would you like to take this question? I didn't see the questions very Okay, so um, I will read out the question again. So it's regarding the projects. How to assess if a company meets data quality requirement? So the risk and concern is that if they sign up for the project and the data is not good enough, what will happen? Yeah. Oh, so uh, most time uh, they ask them to, this one is uh, before project start, uh, before this uh, training start, we have a workshop with uh, all the company uh, trainees, engineer, manager. We have a workshop to discuss what kind of data you need to collect. Uh, so you, you, do, you try your best to collect the data. We need to identify the data, input data, output data, maybe input data is a process parameter. How many process parameter you have? Where is the data source? How to collect? Then another one is uh, your product uh, quality measurement, uh, for example, like uh, wafer sickness, this uh, may be measured from a QA department. So you need to define the different data source, then collect, collect all possible data in first. Then by end, uh, it's also have the case. For example, one company is uh, have a seven group, uh, it's a seven project. Then among these seven, only five project have a result. Another two side, another two group, they don't have enough data. Uh, maybe they cannot find any correlation between collect data. That's why it doesn't matter, but you also learn how to go through this process. Uh, they learn how to do the data analysis approach. So we allow this, this is not a real project, it's for the training project. We also allow they don't have any uh, result come out because data is not enough. But for the, this project, we also have a recommendation. You need to find out why this data not accurate, why this data not good enough. You need to suggest your management. I found out somewhere 
is a, maybe is a major factor, but don't have a data collect. You need to suggest, uh, maybe you need to set, set up a new sensor, uh, how to get this uh, data first. That mean before data analysis, you need to do the digitalization first. But before you don't know, uh, don't go through this analysis, you don't know uh, this uh, available data not correlate with your problem, right? So this one is also a solution. You gave the recommendation. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lee. Yep. Well, we hope we have answered the question. Right. So, yeah. Maybe if there are other questions. So, I just want to add uh, this Ming Mao. I'm the uh, industrial development manager. So, this uh, course is, uh, is both a training program. So, we'll be training you a methodology how to do using data mining to do your work. And so you'll learn data mining techniques. So if you don't have data, we have test data for you to learn the techniques. But for the, those who have data, you have the advantage of bringing your data and use it to actually like doing a simple feasibility to solve your problem. So actually through the course, we, we, uh, we actually help quite a number of company. A lot of them some may be collecting a wrong data. So collecting the wrong data is, is, is very detrimental because garbage in is garbage out. So we will also guide you how to get your data and all this. Another thing that is very important is also what about missing data? What is the strategy? Maybe some of the data don't have every field. So what are you going to do? So we also teach you the strategy, how to patch up some of this data instead of just ignoring them or what. So data collection is very important. And if you need digitalization, we also have some digitalization uh, technologies available. We can discuss with you whether you can work with us uh, to pull this data out from the machine and so on. Okay, so, so this course is very unique because you get free use of the software during this period, and then you can try it out as a feasibility study. And if you are doing a corporate class, we can load this software into your notebook. Then all the data is being used by yourself. So a lot of company is very sensitive data. So even if it's sensitive data, please desensitize your data before you come to the class. You can call it column A, B, C, D, E, or column one, two, three, four, five, because we don't care what exactly it means, but it's more to use the techniques to help so our approach is we are data scientists. We are trying to teach you new technique so that you as an engineer or domain expert can do your job better using some new tools. All right. Are there any other questions? I think there's a, there's a question. So um, the question is regarding, are we logged into Syntax software after the class? Okay, uh, to answer these questions is uh, also some company do the same thing. Then they also ask the same questions. Uh, they say have a few company after this uh, training, they really see the benefit. Then they want to continue use this uh, Simpro, uh, Syntax data mining software. Then they buy the license. Uh, this uh, license is uh, one time uh, for permanent uh, and uh, no user limit. Mm. Okay, so to add on to this, we also have participants with the concerns. But what happened is that uh, they are also, we actually introduced this software is for the easy implementation of some of the algorithms used. But actually, you are also invited to also use your own software. We can also guide you accordingly, right? So you are not locked into Syntax software, but if you think that is useful for you, we definitely are there to support you. Yeah. Uh, the very important is uh, some company is uh, first uh, for, by training. You look at like, the feasibility study. After that, uh, they think about next phase. Uh, some company is uh, continue work with us is uh, how to implement this uh, so-called configure method online. Uh, this, uh, Training is offline. You collect some data by Excel. 
then you know, just uh, prove the concept. This uh, data mining algorithm is uh, working for your process. The next stage is uh, how to implement. Uh, so we have uh, uh, quite a number of companies is uh, continue have a second phase. Uh, so second phase is a pilot project. Pilot project means you choose one machine, two machine, uh, one process, two more process to implement this uh, data mining online. After they feel this online is uh, works, then you scale up to other machine, uh, all the shelf flow. So this is uh, by phase. First phase, training. Second phase, pilot project. Third phase is a full scale implementation. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Yeah. And also thank you for the question. Please feel free to uh, ask any questions you have. And also Peter, may I know how's the polling going along? Yeah, please do help us to answer the polling question also, right? Yeah. Yes, everyone, you can continue for the, for the polling, okay? For the poll, you give us your opinion whether you, you want to attend some of the courses or one of the courses, or you want to know more information. Okay, anyone else? Uh, if no more, uh, whether Dr. Li Xiang or Ge Ling or Ming Mo have any final words? Yeah, otherwise, it will be end uh, here. Okay, thank you for uh, joining this uh, webinar. Uh, I think uh, you can contact us uh, uh, directly if uh, you have any questions, you have any interesting, uh, we can discuss together. We can follow up, yeah. So thank you very much for attending today's session. So as you can see, a lot of people actually want to do data mining, but there's actually a, still a gap ongoing. So we are here to help. So Syntec is always a, a trusted partner for you, right? So you can always approach us to uh, discuss any of the questions required. So in fact, you are not, uh, it, it's not compulsory, it's not obligatory for you to actually sign up for the course itself. Even for minor small projects, you may actually have some, some questions, you can also approach us, right? So Syntec is actually, um, we, our priority actually focus uh, on the, we actually follow the national priority. So we are here to help to improve the productivity, improve the, um, the workforce. Right, so do contact us if you have any need. Yeah, and thank so, you so much. Uh, so the public class uh, this twenty uh, first uh, of June. Uh, maybe this year we because of COVID nineteen we only have this one batch. Uh, please join if you are interested. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Bye bye. Okay, thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So looking forward to see you again. Bye-bye.